What's the worst display of incompetence you've ever witnessed? I was assistant to a VP at a bank. One of my duties was to make him look good each Monday morning for the meeting. I would print out his homework from the past week and keep it all tidy so he could just rattle it off. One Monday, he literally said, don't say this part from my notes. Ro, dude, I can't have made it too much easier. Another one, I was working at a gas station and had to hit the emergency stop on a pump because a dumbass let his 4 year old try to pump gas and he got it in his face, in his eyes, and the father comes running in and I direct him to the eye wash and the whole time he is screaming at Emmy because his kid got gas in his eyes. Had to call fire rescue to come and the guy continues to blame and scream at everyone who is trying to help, saying how he is going to sue the station and blah blah blah. I just felt so bad for this kid. TL. DR. Dumbass lets his toddler pump gas and then screams at everyone when the kid gets gas in his eyes. A group of students at my workplace who did not realize, until they were taking a formal English exam, that their teacher had been teaching them the wrong book for 6 months. They failed the exam, but inexplicably they're all fluent in Swedish. There was a woman who survived a car crash but was left for days in the car with her dead family because the police didn't come to check it out. She died in the hospital. We were running out of stock space at work, so the company spent $3 million to renovate the stockroom and by the end we lost stock space. They call it manglement for a reason. The Hungarian government trying to tax the internet. It was going to be a fixed rate per gigabyte. It was bafflingly stupid really. Had one of my chefs chopping and blanching chips fries, a job usually left for whatever commie was on shift but we were short that day so I got him on it. He had a large baby killer, a large plastic container, they come in many sizes and have a small sticker of a baby falling into them on the side, full of water and after he had chopped would dump the fries in there to soak the starch out, usually you would drain them and then fry, well he just walks straight over to the fryer and dumps the whole thing in, water included. I'm in shock at this point but run over and drag him away and then lunge for the emergency electricity cut off switch. Hit that then move away. The oil fizzes for a few seconds and then just erupts and fills the kitchen wool gallons and gallons of oil. One of the stupidest things I've ever seen happen in a kitchen. Man, you saved homie's life. Probably slingshot him, a guy I used to work with who managed to slingshot himself into an office table during a meeting. Tim was the definition of an unnecessary hire. His dad was one of our most important suppliers at the time, so the boss was forced to hire him for a job he basically couldn't do, but also couldn't ever really be fired for. It was the moron sweet spot. During one meeting with Tim, I saw him lean really far back in his chair during a meeting. Far enough back that the chair started to creak loudly. So far so standard. But Tim had done this maneuver without turning the little knob thing under the chair to give himself a little slack. So he had to push really hard against the base of the table to stay in his casual position. It looked like a surprising amount of effort. Tim was visibly sweating to stay cool. Eventually, Tim couldn't take it anymore. And ended up slipping about two thirds of the way into the meeting. Thanks to physics the lack of tension shot his chair forward, throwing him into the conference table. He took the entire desk to the chest, shaking the projector enough to unplug it from the wall and spilling more than a few cups of coffee. It was the most hilariously loud and stupid thing I've ever seen in a meeting. Even people walking by the conference room completely stopped to witness this grown man turn himself into a human catapult. He picked himself up off the floor in a daze. Then started hurriedly packing up his stuff amidst uproarious laughter and ran out of the room. I'm not sure if Tim still works there, but I'm definitely sure the legend of Slingshot Tim endures to this day. Our latest crime fighting superhero, Slingshot Tim. I was working with an older transportation engineer at work. The guy had literally designed hundreds of miles of highways, interchanges, and roadways. He was helping to write a 100 page document that I was an editor on. He took the document without speaking to any other member of the team and sent it out to 20 different people for their input without tracked changes on it. He said he thought that, 
If he didn't change the name of the document, that it would just automatically update on our server when they made changes too. In the end, I ended up with more than 25 versions of it that I was checking line by line for changes at all hours of the night because it was due in several days and some of the changes conflicted. Ugh. I explained the whole issue to him once I was finished fixing it all, but he did it again on another, smaller document a month later, then he retired suddenly, I think that they asked him to leave because his skills stopped developing in the 1970s, and because he stole food from work all the time, even though he was rich, don't miss him one bit, holy crap. We track changes via Google Docs on stupid fanfic edits. I can't imagine not doing that in an office setting. I was at a subway and the person in front of me asked for a BLT. The employee just stared blankly until the customer said, Bacon, lettuce and tomato. The girl then grabbed some bacon and put it on the bread, but then just stared blankly again until the customer said, Lettuce. After putting lettuce on the bread, the customer got a blank stare until saying, tomato. To this day, it's the dumbest employee I've ever seen. We have this chemical we have to inject in our process to make sure solids don't come out of the liquid. We have been warning this particular customer for months that the level of this chemical was low and dropping, and they better add some stat. Instead they decide to use the Kramer approach and push it to the last drop. Now they have solids in all their tanks and pumps causing them to have to shut down and clean out every piece of equipment manually, and losing production for about a week. That's a couple of million bucks down the drain, good jobs guys. We have a coolant circuit that uses distilled water. Occasionally the tank is a little low and needs to be topped off. We tell a guide to refill it. Later we come back and we see empty oil jugs next to the tank. No he didn't, there's no way. Sure enough there is now a crap ton of oil in our water system. Fan freaking tastic were my exact words I think. Oh, there's a lot, but one of them sticks out. For my job, I work with a lot of files and storing them. This one lady didn't quite get how that was done. So, she put a bunch of files in a box, and then wrote down the identifying number for each of those files on a piece of paper. So then I get to the office and I'm handed a stack of 20 boxes, and a stack of 20 sheets of paper, with no way of telling which box corresponded to which piece of paper. We store thousands of boxes of files. No amount of explaining could get this woman to understand that we don't go dig through every one of those boxes every time someone needs a file back. I was doing contract work in Miami for a drug company making a product containing nitroglycerine. They had a chemist, PhD who I thought did some odd things, but one fine day we had a meeting across town with him in it. It was a planned meeting. The subject material was known to all days before it. During this meeting, the good doctor gets up to make some point. This prompted him to start drawing a stick figure of nitroglycerine on the whiteboard. He drew three carbons. So far, so good. And then another, and finally a fifth. I looked at my boss, I'm a R&D engineer physicist by degree, and he saw it too. Nitroglycerine doesn't have 5 carbon atoms in it, it has 3. While this might be a little nitpicky, this guy was the chemist for this plant, with PhD, and nitroglycerine delivery was the entire point of the product. I checked everything I saw from him after that lest it become my mistake. We get called by a school, concerned about EM pollution caused by their Wi-Fi and tablets. My colleague suggested to the principal to shut down the Wi-Fi and just connect the tablets with Ethernet cables. While I was there speechless, principal replied hey good idea. EM pollution caused by their Wi-Fi. I thought this stuff was dealt with years ago, you know with all the double blind testing etc. This story doesn't end with someone almost dying or anything, but it was the moment where I realized just how incompetent the company's middle management was. I work for a luxury retail company. My manager had been having issues getting into the hiring system to post job openings and push through resumes. He hadn't had access to it since he was hired for whatever reason. He had been trying to sort it out for months because school was starting up again and he knew he needed more staff. He had been in an exchange with the person in charge of hiring, and he kept explaining he didn't have access to the system. All the person had to do was email him a link to reset the password and he was golden. 
He gets an email saying that she will put it on her list of things to do today. She sent him an email saying she would send him an email with the link, when she could have sent him the link immediately. We still don't have access to the hiring system, and it's been a month. I hate people that do that crap. She should be fired. I work in construction. Incompetence is a daily occurrence, in no particular order. 1. Crane operator overcompensated and slammed the 35 ton air handler he was placing on the roof into the wall of the hospital. 2. Medical gas certification company didn't check all the outlets on a line, just the last one. Well he screwed up and read the gauges wrong. Passed the system and it went into operation. Two weeks later, a patient is brought into the ear and requires oxygen. So they hook him up to the oxygen wall outlet. Only problem is that during construction, some dumbass got the lines crossed and the oxygen outlet was actually connected to the vacuum line. Patient was fine, after some well deserved freaking out. 3. All shaft walls are 2HR rated, UL listed enclosures for fire safety and this is strictly enforced and doubly so in hospitals. Well some hospital maintenance guy decided that the exhaust fan the hospital was putting in on the sly needed to have the ductwork go up this shaft. So he punched a 4x4 feet hole in it and ran some ductwork through it. Never sealed the hole. No fire smoke dampers. No nothing. We found it during demo when we renovated the area. 4. During an inspection. There was a problem with the way the sprinkler heads were installed. Nothing major. Just needed to tighten some uplifts restraints. Well you need to be licensed to work on that stuff. So. The idiot plumber decides hey. I've got a wrench and can tighten crap. So he climbs on the ladder and starts going to town in front of the inspector. Came very close to failing the inspection. 5 everyone is complaining that there is no hot water to half the hospital and starts blaming my design. Okay, let me look. Well idiot plumber put all of the check valves in backwards so no hot water was allowed out of the system. 6. Found a fire smoke damper propped open with a 2x4. 7. Previous contractor did not reconnect the storm pipes under the slab before repouring the concrete. Every time it rained, water would bubble up through the floor tiles and flood the EKG lab. Hospital didn't investigate until a patient slipped. They had just been sending a dude with a mop to clean the floor. There are so many more. Edit. Remembered some really good ones. 8. An electrical ground wire zip tied to a 1 inches oxygen line. 9. 2 inches main hospital oxygen line installed above the main kitchen hood. 10. Maintenance removed all the supply diffusers from the main hallway that had a west facing wall. A 60 foot long wall of glass and no shade because they didn't see the need for it during the last renovation. Well then don't complain to me when the insulation on the chilled water piping is soaked like a sponge and you have a nice brown line on your ceiling tiles showing the pipe path. And the room is hotter than Satan's armpit. In the early 90s I worked at a small, mom and pop ad agency. There were less than 10 employees. I was a graphic designer and spent most of my days behind a 21 inches CRT creating illustrations of food for several weekly newspaper inserts. The company had been doing weekly inserts like this for over 20 years. 4 years digitally and had a pretty good library of artwork stored on the server. But, as product packaging changed, or new products were released it was our responsibility to create it. For this task, we had a monthly stipend from the advertiser to purchase items as required so that we could photograph them, get them into our system, and photo illustrate them. Now, let me introduce a man named Floyd. Floyd was an elderly gentleman, if I had to guess. He was 70 if he was a day. He was our driver. As an ad agency, often you're running film and stats and other printing press type things across town. Last minute to make deadlines. It makes sense to have a driver. Floyd was good at being a driver. We gave him an address and he went there. And, he dropped off what he had. Not much thought goes on. However, one late Wednesday afternoon we're on deadline. Grocery inserts go in the Thursday morning papers. And I learned very late that when missing the new bag art for the £10 bag of Alpo dog food that's on sale tomorrow. As far as my job goes, this is about as panicked as I can get. Aside from a computer meltdown there was not much else that could go wrong in my position. I didn't have time to run to the store which I usually did. Had I planned well, 
Everyone else was elbows and buttholes on their computers trying to hit deadline. The only able, available body was Floyd, sitting in the corner, legs crossed reading the newspaper. Comma hey, Floyd, I need you to do me a huge favor. Comma sure, comma take this credit card and run to redacted store. I need a 10 pound bag of Alpo. Hurry back quickly. I have to get this done before 6.30 when you drive over the film. Roger that. And, off he goes for 45 minutes. Never mind that it's a 5 minute drive to the store. Should have taken 20 minutes maximum. No cell phones. Not reasonably priced anyway. And, definitely not ubiquitous. So, I wait. And, finally Floyd walks in. With a 10 pound bag of store brand dog food. Comma Floyd. Comma here's your dog food. Comma where's the Alpo? Comma go. Oh, this was cheaper. I saved like three dollars. Comma Floyd? Comma we don't have a freaking dog. Snatches the card from his hand and run out the door to get the Alpo myself. To this day, I still can't remember if I made it back on time. If I made the 6.30 delivery. But, the legend of Floyd will live on in my mind forever. In his defense, you didn't specify it was actually for an ad. On the other hand, Literally everything about the situation and your job and the job he does as a result should have made that very clear. There was a guy who was famous among electricians for his stupidity the best by far was when a foreman asked him to clean out that trailer and burn everything. He cleaned it out then burned down the trailer. Dude sounds like a C++ compiler. Our server room at my last job began leaking water from the ceiling. Not a good thing. It happened during second shift so the only person there to respond to the alarm was the guy we purposely put on second shift so he couldn't screw up the busier day shift. Come in the next morning to find a bucket on the floor and a note on the door that he fixed the leak. Didn't report it. Didn't get the maintenance team in. Just threw a bucket under it and called it a day. Needless to say, one leak ended up becoming several overnight. We, in Australia, recently had a national census. Government spent millions setting up a website encouraging people to use it. Only it couldn't handle more than a million queries an hour and so crashed just after dinner time, roughly 7pm, when not surprisingly more than a million people just happened to log in. On census night, they're now running ads to assure people they are competent enough to store all the private data gathered. I work as a 911 ambulance dispatcher. This chick got a promotion she didn't deserve, and she was primary dispatcher one day. I had a unit going to a standby, when they came up closer for a cardiac arrest. As in, someone is dead dying, they need help immediately. The unit going to the standby, with no patience, was about 7 minutes closer than the unit she assigned. I let her know, she acknowledged me, and promptly left things the way they were. I wonder if the cardiac arrest would have had a better outcome if she hadn't been so incompetent and switched the units. My supervisor told me to deal with it, because she was promoted over me. I absolutely loathe managers who can't manage, or expect me to manage up, and then still screw it up and blame me, and that's just in accounting, where mistakes can be fixed slowly. This is totally unacceptable in a profession where lives are at risk every hour. I was getting my driver's license renewed in Chicago. I needed to get a vision check. I put my eyes up to the machine. The clerk said please read the, couldn't hear what number she said, line. I asked could you repeat that her response. Stamped my paperwork and said go pay the clerk. Went to a bagel place on a mildly busy Sunday morning. Ordered a bagel. Cashier looked at me wide eyed. Said nothing. Went to her manager. Manager comes over. Tells me it will be a good 40 minute wait. I was in Vegas a few years ago with some friends. And after a night of drinking and debauchery, we stumble down the strip looking for food. The McDonald's was open so we go there. Only to be told they were out of hamburger buns. Not sure how that happens, but funny nevertheless. I worked at A&W when I was in HS. One day my manager decided to go clean the bathroom. He comes back about 5 minutes later complaining of a headache and that the fumes must be getting to him. I asked him what cleaner he used and he said oh. I mixed some of the blue with some of the orange. He mixed cleaner that had ammonia in it with bleach. The fumes were getting really bad in the store so I told him to dump it and that we needed to get the doors open. 
I had one of my co-workers run home to get some fans and we got the store aired out. I was 17 at the time and my manager was 25. What a freaking dumbass. TL. DR. Boss mixed ammonia and bleach to clean a bathroom. Dang near killed himself. My co-worker, Joe, not real name, came in one Monday morning and told me that he lost his eyesight for about half an hour over the weekend because he was looking at the moon through a telescope without filters. Joe came in another day with a cast on his leg and told me about how he fell in a hole that had rebar in it on site at a project because there was a newspaper covering the hole and he stomped on the newspaper. He let a worker cut a pipe with a saw while holding the pipe in one hand and he cut off a finger. Who is Joe? What does he do at our company? Oh yeah, Joe is our OSHA competent person on the field. I know he has done something dangerous stupid lately and as soon as I find out what it is I will post an edit about it. I work at a golf course, manager asked the old incompetent guy whose wife begged manager to give him a job so he'd get out of the house to clean the yardage markers, middle of the fairway at 250, 200, 150, 100. He was doing stuff before that, so around 11.30, when the course is packed, he drives out and sits down in the middle of the fairway so he can use a wet wipe to wipe off these markers. A couple of us were all finishing up on the same hole so we were talking. What the frick is he doing we finally drove over. Waved the players off. Oh I didn't realize there were people playing. 11.30 at a golf course. When exactly did you think people played golf? Then he does the same thing. Goes out to trim tree branches on trees more or less in the middle of the fairway. This is a 65 year old man. I'm 25. I had to drive out there and tell him Joe you cannot be standing here trimming while people are aimed straight at you. Maybe that is the way he wanted to die. Bald. Watched someone try to swipe a library card to try and get into a university building instead of his uni card for about 5 minutes. He looked quizzically at the card and everything. And yes the two cards are completely different. The shock was so strong it took me a while before I corrected him. I used to work part time at McDonald's to pay student loans and the worst thing I've ever saw was this dude casually pouring melted butter into the oil tanks and when he was done he just looked at it and went oh. I was too shocked to do anything. Before anyone asks, the containers are very different. And the one with butter in it says butter in all caps. Also the butter is stored in the fridge while the vegetable oil is stored in the stockroom. I worked at an assisted living facility. There were outlets that had red covers. They were red because it signified that the outlet was hooked up to the generator. This was for the men of patients who were hooked up to machines that they needed to continue living. So if the power went out they would not die. Place gets repainted so all the outlet covers are removed. See where this is headed? No one pays any attention to the color coding and the red covers get put all over just willy nilly. Wasn't until many months later when a huge storm took the power out for days that anyone realized this grave mistake. Fortunately no lives were lost. I was at a restaurant. The young waiter was clearing dishes. He dropped all the dishes right by the table. Like he didn't even make it a few feet. Start stacking them up again. Is super embarrassed. And then he drops them again. His superior comes over and sends him back into the kitchen and clears all the dishes. This hurts my heart. Poor freaking kid. The collective group of people that form Etna. I've been dealing with claims from my mother's visit to the last year and I never understand how they haven't gone out of business with that level of incompetence. The a doctor sent us a bill for $1,335. We are supposed to be responsible for $178. Alright then. Paid that amount. Two months later a doctor sent us a bill for the remaining balance. I called Aetna. They promised to reprocess it. Two months went by. Nothing. Meanwhile we got the same bill from the doctor every other week nagging for payment. I called for the same thing 15 more times. That spanned the course of 6 months. Finally in March someone processed it and sent out a check to us. Surprise surprise. It never came. In May I called and they said somehow the check went missing. They'd reissue it. 5 calls and 1 month later. No check. In June. Got someone who finally processed it and 2 days later a check came. Guess what? It's $266 less than what we still owe the doctor. I've made about 5 calls since June. And still. No payment in sight. One rep after another promised me they'd send it in to be reprocessed. 
and nothing ever happened. I've been disputing this claim for 13 months, and still no end in sight. Do the people at Etna's claim department sit around reading BuzzFeed all day? Oh, bonuses. There was also a claim from my father that was processed as out of network while the provider was in network. That took 5 calls and 3 months to be resolved. Also right now I see about 20 claims for her physical therapy sessions that are covered 100% since her deductible is maxed out, but they processed it as out of network and claim we owe the therapist $3000. At this point Aetna is even higher than ISIS on my top most hated organization. If they have a Facebook or Twitter page I advise you bombard it with this crap. Bad publicity usually gets the company off its ass. The time I was in the hospital after childbirth and got a migraine. I take a prescription medication for migraine as I am allergic to OTC painkillers, Tylenol and NSAIDs. So I'm asking for a dose of my usual prescribed migraine abortive and the doc says she's just going to give me Tylenol 3. I remind her I can't take it. See this big red allergy band on my wrist? She asks what my reaction is. Hives and facial swelling. She turned to the nurse and told her to give me the Tylenol and some Benadryl. I told the nurse there was no way I was taking the Tylenol. Finally they agreed to give me my migraine medicine. Then the nurse couldn't figure out the auto injector so I just did it myself. Also, upon discharge, what do you think they have me as a painkiller? Percocet of course. Which contains Tylenol. So it took me another couple of hours to get that straightened out and get a painkiller prescribed that wouldn't land me in anaphylaxis. And it should be no surprise that this was at a military hospital. I had a tech bring down a computer that was monitoring a medication drip for a surgery patient when I worked for a hospital IT department. They had to close up the patient and move him to a different operating theater because of this. His reasoning was that since he couldn't find where the computer was located to roll out an OS update he would take it down and wait for someone to call in a ticket. The blowhard consultant the home office had sent us, with some good news, some bad. In his pep talk about the good news he kept trotting out his deep understanding of business by using words like synergies and core competencies. It was unbelievable bulls babble. People were rolling their eyes, even the boss couldn't hide his disgust. Then the consultant got to the bad news. Some jobs would be lost through nutrition. The boss asked him if he meant attrition. Nope. Nutrition. UHH. What? You're going to starve us? Howls of laughter. Everyone looking around like WTF. That was it. The boss ended the meeting right there. Visibly furious. I never saw he consultant again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.